Back by popular demand, a payday. Oh, wait. Let me fix that. Ooh, better. Oops. One more thing. And one more thing. Hello and welcome back to another Payday 2, or should I say, Payday 2 slash 3 ranking video. Wait, Payday 2 thirds? Kind of fits. What do you mean by that? While Payday 3 is on its comeback trail, it sure is an appetite for its older brother, which actually feels more like a second cousin twice removed. But there sure are the players to back this up. So today, we triumphantly merge the two and answer the question I get every stream over on twitch.tv slash bcroft. Um, what heist would you like to see from Payday 2 in Payday 3? All right, I made a bit of fun there, but it's actually a really good question. Hence, here we are with this video. Now, before we start, I did consider ranking all heists from Payday 2 and Payday 3 together in one big old chunk of a list. But when I came to plan that video, I started with this and then scrapped the idea. So we shall just rank worst to best Payday 2 heist from what we really don't want to see to what we really must see, or which I will loosely refer as worst to best given this criteria. Now disclaimer, all the opinions in this video are my own and therefore correct. So take your own wrong opinions and place them down in the comments and prepare for battle. Keyboard warriors, stand guard and prepare to fight. For those who do not wish to watch the whole video, there are timestamps in the description for you impatient bastards. There are 78 heists in Payday 2. Holy shit. That's right. Well, there are technically more, but we're going to lump a couple of duplicates together and the tutorial thingamajig isn't in here either. Now this list may vary from my previous ranking Payday 2 heist list as there's some new ones here, plus some new ones and times have changed and opinions are allowed to as well. This list is not exactly my worst to best of Payday 2, but a mix between a wish list and what I would like to play taking into account the newer visuals of Payday 3, its gameplay feel along with what I think the game could benefit from, plus a bunch of other shit rolled in. If you do happen to like these kind of videos, consider a cheeky subscribe and a like if you're feeling generous. It really, really helps me out when I make a YouTube video once every two years. Enough rambling, let's get into it. Starting at number 78 and in the just no category, Cook Off. All right, I'm being kind of ironic putting this one at the bottom, seeing as it's already in the game. But to me, it illustrates a pretty poor decision of a heist port. This heist is the most basic possible. A house in the middle, grab three things, put them in when you're told to, and leave. The version we got somehow feels worse than Payday 2's, and at least we had achievements for the prior. We don't have Bane, Shade messes up once in a blue moon, taking away any doubt, and it caps at 19 bags. There's no Captain Winters, it looks a little nicer, I'll give it that, but the lighting's all kinds of messed up. For some reason, there are cook-off lovers out there, but I'm not sure if the money and leveling capacity got intertwined with its actual fun, or in fact, took over the reasoning. Truth is, this heist is boring, especially considering heists that have you all over the place and not just in one spot. 77, safe house nightmare. This is a nightmare. Granted, it's a bolt-on meme heist for an event, which actually makes me yearn for the days that we actually got these. Oh, how we took them for granted. This heist wouldn't really be great in Payday 3. We already got the cloaker spam. Imagine the atrocities in this heist. No thanks, keep it. 76 is White Christmas. Never liked this one, barely played it. You kind of feel confined to just one building and only leave when you have to. Would not translate well to Payday 3. Best thing about this heist is the interaction with the drunk guy who... Is that Almir? I think it is. Bring back that, not the heist. 75 is Cursed Kill Room, another event heist that has you running around a building. There's a timer and there's mass stuff, but who knows what the fuck's going on. Again, I applaud the posterity of getting free event heists. Hopefully they return, just not remakes of these shitters. I do feel bad pooping on free content as I feel so starved of it right now. But we have to keep our head in the game here, fellas. All right, so we kind of made it out the lowest of the low. Now to the plain old, just don't do it portion of the show. 74 is Rats, barely pulled itself away from the bottom part due to the multiple day shenanigans. Ah, we missed thee. Another sepia moment from the days of yore. Day one is cook off with a much smaller bag cap. Getting all loot on that day will take you about 30 minutes. You can get an escape to deal with afterwards, another five minutes. Day two of the heist is kind of fun, especially stealth, another five minutes. You can trigger an escape again, another five minutes. And day three, you can speed run it. Disarming the stuff on the bus is kind of cool, but complete fully is another five minutes. Overall, this five day heist can take close to three hours to complete. Well, not really, but thanks, but no thanks. 73, four stores. I think we got our fix and a good upgrade with the diamond district in Payday 3. 
I like Diamond District and never really liked Four Stores. It's a bit on the boring side. However, the concept's good enough to make the aforementioned Diamond District receive some praise on its affinity to this heist. Put simply, I don't think we need this one now. Ukrainian job. I'll take the old school Bane commentary any day. However, this heist is a bit shit. One small save to clear and you're done. In and out. Which brings me on to number 71. Jewelry store. Same as the previous, but needs bags instead of the safe. If you play the top difficulty, you'll need a bag from the safe to finish, but it's all the same old stuff here. 70. Border crystals. It's cook off, but in a warehouse with vans outside for ingredients. Same rules apply as with cook off, really. Just plain don't do it. Don't spend the time on porting this one. You may ask if it's the same as cook off, why is it slightly above cook off on the list? It's a good question. 69. Border crossing. I sounded excited there. Please no. A heist where if you fail day two, you have to redo day one. Jesus. The warehouses feel like election day two. Flow of the heist is not great at all. And the amount of bags is ungodly. Let's not subject ourselves to doing this one. 68 takes us into the not bothered category. A collection of heists that are starting to become more intriguing if they were to enter Payday 3. Wouldn't be my top picks and wouldn't necessarily push for the remake either, but I certainly wouldn't kick them out of bed. If you know what I mean. Murky Station, not a super bad pick to pour over to Payday 3. Like I mentioned, I wouldn't have been part of my top picks to do, especially first up, but the port itself wasn't that bad. The introduction of a new objective was cool, if not tricky to pull off sometimes. Then you realise you can just kill the employee and not do that finicky objective and instead sit in circle. Final thought here is that we missed an opportunity to add a loud element. There should be no stealth only heist. Always allow loud as an option. I feel like there can be loud only, just no stealth only. You just keep everyone wondering, this heist would be so cool if we could do it loud. And you will hear me talk about this later in the list, trust me. 67 is Bomb Forest. This one gets a lot of hate, mainly for the fact that you can be running down the hill, jump and end up plain dead. I often had neck pain by the end of this heist just from the head tilt. This was until I realised I could swivel my monitor on its stand, so I just did that when I played the heist. Worked like a charm. Alright, I didn't do that, but it's an option. This heist on a flat surface would be weird, but no weirder than seeing it in Payday 3. Maybe they'd surprise us with this one and it would be a different vibe that everyone would like. Or maybe not. 66 is Midland Ranch. For some reason, I just did not like this heist. It flowed very badly from one area to the next and holding out in barns and then the run to the escape just fell off. I don't think the translation to Payday 3 would work here. Saying that, I do feel this heist would look great in Payday 3. 65 are all the transport heists bundled together. The armoured ones, not including the train thingy. This collection was alright as a collective. I'd actually take a pack of these, but individually, no thanks. A certain variety of them was actually good looking back and each variation with scaling difficulty and nuance. I get the feeling of the end of road rage heist kind of with the van hoisted up and we're just waiting, but that times three or four vans and I kind of don't like that idea, so it gets a uh, meh. The White House could be fun, could be horrible. The idea of storming the White House in Payday is grandiose and far from what we get now in Payday 3. This did house the secret ending, which, albeit a bit Looney Tune and veering off track from the storyline into the realm of fantasy, almost, but hey, it sure was a spectacle. Heist was a bit annoying, really. The Bomb Dockyard. Stealth-wise, this heist wasn't too bad, just not one that was high on anyone's list. Well, maybe a few. And loud, this one felt very dissected. Either side of the middle boat area was cut off by the barrier once you went loud. Again, I think the visuals would benefit from Payday 3 on this one, but the gameplay would not be a solid port. Shacklethorn. For some reason, I always thought this was Shacklethorn Mansion, but it's not, it's Auction. I never hated this heist. However, all loot runs were not favored. Good feeling to it. Again, would look great in Payday 3. If it ever does get ported, don't bring back that achievement. You know, the finishing a certain time thingy. 61, Prison Nightmare. Ah, the robbed a cop train. How I loathe thee. Another event heist that was introduced and probably the best of the bunch. I mean, who doesn't want an 80 foot cloaker doing roundhouse kicks in the background looking like an Elden Ring boss out here? Vibe is good on this one, definitely creeping up towards the next category now. 60, Lost in Transit. I'll be honest, I didn't really play this one that much, but I do remember that it wasn't half bad. Great criteria there, huh? Dragon Heist. With a majority of heists happening downstairs, this heist surprisingly wasn't bad as my initial impression. Simple and has a pretty decent flow. No major issues really. Also didn't play this one that much. 58 Breaking Feds. 
This one gets a lot of hate too, a little petty stealth heist. Would probably be super easy given Payday 3 stealth mechanics, so would therefore need a little bit switching up. The aesthetics are pretty low key, seemingly taken from day two of Hoxton Breakout. The opportunity to add a loud component too to this one would be welcomed. 57 Breakfast in Tijuana. Borderline, next category now. Stealth on this one was a bit tedious, but loud was some fun. The heist could have been a little longer, I thought, and setting sprinklers off on things that are burning, it was just annoying. If it were to make a Payday 3 appearance, make it longer. I feel like if you move around so much inside the building that spawns rarely catch up to your location, that can make this a little bit easier. 56 is Alaskan deal. Ain't too bad this one. Some indoor spots, some manic outdoor combat, a big boat, a train car, a storyline curveball at the time of release. I feel like if this heist was released in Payday 3, it would feel a bit alien and the storyline would be a little butchered. This heist came at a pivotal time and sat well in the story. With Payday 3's lack of story and attachment to it, sadly this would feel out of place in spite of the heist feeling good to play. 55 brings us to the wouldn't mind section, which could be called would like at the same time. This part could serve as the start of a potential wish list that would not offend if delivered. Nightclub, a classic and seemingly better than Rock the Cradle, if not just for nostalgia. Nothing elaborate, just a plain old close quarters nightclub that tickled our pickle for the last 11 years. For stealthers, seeing the Gensec sign missing on the wall meant you had a shot at an easier stealth run, only to fuck it up and then see the Gensec sticker on the next run. If you know, you know. Good times. Meltdown. First off, let's clear this up right now. This is not Shadow Raid Loud. It never was, it never will be, and just no. This one could be fun in Payday 3. Driving forklifts and cars, turrets, and a long run to the train. And don't forget the nukes! It's a fun heist, it has its moments, and you have to love Vlad on this one. 53 is mall crashes. Smashing up a mall to meet the value criteria is a top-notch idea. 11 years ago too. As simple as this heist is, it has a feel. Hiding out in your favoured store while you wait 12 hours for the chop to show up is fun. Has a cool stealth, can't stealth mechanic to it that's arguably a bit slow and boring, but a nice little challenge to do once in a while. 52, Henry's cock suffers from too much going on sometimes, but in that chaos, it's an okay heist. As objectives are played out, the rooms in which they do are balls to the wall combat. Not sure how this would actually translate to Payday 3, probably a shit show at best, especially given how the special enemies are in Payday 3. There could be some fun in there somewhere. Hell's Island is intriguing, making your way through the facility and eventual freedom fighting at the end as you race to the chopper exit. This heist could be a good addition if done right, and the same reservations around storyline would surface just as Alaskan deal. But this one would not be a super bad pick. 50. Sounds like a milestone, but it's really not. Santa's workshop. Santa's elves boxing up presents of crack. You have to love it. Nostalgia to the max for me on this one, and the safe event thingy that you can trigger was always fun. Heist is manic at times, trying to keep their elves doing their work, and the management of that based on location was always chaotic. Soundtrack slaps on this one and applaud a seasonal event heist of this caliber. A rerun of this in the upcoming holiday season would surely be welcomed. Nudge, nudge. Go Bank. I believe the dream of this port is actually a non-starter, as the consoles never got this even though it was released in 2013. A tidy little bank heist that has some cool stealth stuff going on with phone calls, endless sieves and the blackmailing bastard who demands a bag of our finest over the fence. All I have to say about this one is one day, mark my words, I will start this heist and the vault will be open. Erection day. <coughs> Excuse me. Election day offers up something pretty cool, despite the heist being a little weak-ish. A variation that gets you an alternative day two is pretty cool, and funnily enough, that variation is the best thing about this whole heist. As it's commonly known as Plan C, or heist name-wise Breaking Ballot, is a fun heist to go loud in. 47 is Diamond Store. Ah, classic. And a heist that released one month after game launch. See, we can do it. A nice little stealth that, again, would probably be real easy given Payday 3 stealth mechanics, but the loud aspect of this could be pretty interesting. A large open storefront as a mass of cops come flying at you in waves. Crude Awakening, the last heist to be released for Payday 2. I like this heist, although it was a little confusing to navigate at first. The setting is really cool and the objectives are fun. I feel like both stealth and loud would translate well with this one. Art Gallery. We got under the surface in Payday 3, which visually and audio-wise is a step up. UTS has a camera problem, 
And at the current time, with game modifiers being thrust upon us, this can be hell and unfun. The pre-planning in art gallery allowed spy cams to help show guards and was only on one level in a very simple layout. UTS is a definite upgrade, was it not for those damn circles? Art gallery loud is slept on. Yes, it's simple and kind of restrictive not being able to leave the gallery area, but it's not long heist and feels pretty fun to play. Bullock's Mansion, although you get the eyes wide shut vibe from this, it ain't half bad. Finding the animal codes to then crack the wall thingy and then put the code in is cool. Loud is fun, the whole place is a good area to fight. Visually, this again would look great in Payday 3. Hopefully I did the numbers right and we're at 43. Now, this is Aftershock, not one of my favorites, in particular the heartache of the fails due to the final van lifting debacle. But that being said, location-wise feels really good on this one, very out of the norm for Payday. This could easily be a transplant into Payday 3 and I'm sure would be fun to go along with that. 42 is Brooklyn Bank, a cheeky bank heist with some mayhem. Has a good vibe, fun to play, not much else to say about this one. A very neutral heist in my opinion. Doesn't do anything great, but doesn't do anything bad either. It would be cool to add a stealth element to this one. Alesso is next, the collab we never knew we needed. Or did we know? No, I don't think we did. Can be a bit tedious for first time stealthers until you get your paths down and know the routes to find the X's on the doors. Loud seems a bit manic because the place is so damn large, but it's fun. There's no real long sight lines except for those across the starting area and the exit with bag moving. The ambience of this heist would serve well in Payday 3. Brooklyn 1010 almost feels like a three-part heist between the initial starting area, the middle warehouse bit thingy, and then the shorter holdout at the end. This would port well to Payday 3, I believe. It's just a pure out loud banger that can catch you off guard sometimes. Does nothing special for a loud heist, but does have something I like about that. Uh. <clears throat> Aha, 39. We finally get to the wants. This steps the level up a bit now, getting to the wish list of sorts. From this point on, we have 30 something so heists. So 39 itself, watchdogs, a fun two dayer, let's be honest. Neither day is amazing, but together they're fun. Holding on for dear life on day one, wondering where you need to eventually move those bags and cross your fingers it's not the opposite side to the one you chose, or always choose. Day two is similar with the boat drop off thing, but way more forgiving because they're closer. Would be a cool addition to Payday 3 regardless of how the story would fit. 38 is train heist. Okay, hear me out. Yes, this is not everyone's favorite. Mine either, clearly. There are many heists above this one, but I think it could be a cool, good port to Payday 3. Visually, Payday 2 took this one on well. It looks good for that game. Stealth-wise, it can be a challenge and loud. To be fair on Payday 2 is a bit of a shit show. That being said, with a slight rework, this could be a lot of fun in Payday 3. Don't believe me? Well, I don't really care. 37, Stealing Christmas came to us right before Christmas in 2016 and has a kind of mall crasher vibe. A drunk dude in a Santa outfit and a big Christmas tree, what more could you want? It's fun to run around a mall, hold out in particular stores until the objective is reached and then on to the next one. Want to throw this one our way as a Christmas prezi star breeze, pretty please? 36, Biker Heist. Biker perk deck, Ron Perlman's monotonic heister portrayal and a hidden bottle of booze. Day one is fun, loud and proud, and a couple of variations of objectives are always welcome. Off the bat, do you get the good van or the shitty van? But the jewel here is day two. Again, hear me out, this day has its haters, I get that. But this ain't like Payday 3 Sir, where they just shoved down our throats as many times as they could. This was something that was seemingly tried out, and it looks cool, plays cool, and there's only one heist that does it. Now, who doesn't like being on a moving train that you have to traverse both ways to complete? It's like a dash to the finish line and not a hold out and fight to the end. It's a cool take, and although it may not float your goat, you must tip your hat to something new like this. 35, San Martin. A better looking bank heist. You could say a branch bank job with a twist. Cool opening sequence if you pre-plan it. Fun stealth, fun loud, moves well, and there's definitely been some heartache with the final bag move in here. I bet you know where those damn snipers are on this one. A port of this to Payday 3 would be welcomed. Please and thank you again. Day 4, Reservoir Dogs. Two good, solid, loud days in this heist that feel completely different from each other. Day 1, and I mean actual day 1, none of this confusing shit. So I mean the day we actually play first, you know, day 1. The first day we play is the warehouse and the objective that pulls us away to either one of the far corners. Day 2 is the store and then that kind of weird long sprint to the end. Story-wise, very cool. Not sure how it would fit in Payday 3 with that, but the heist itself would be very good, I'm sure. 
Hostile Takeover, one of the newer heists I didn't put much time to in, but again, one that within the time I did spend, actually not that bad at all, so it's relatively medium on the list. A good solid loud heist with good gameplay and no real standouts. 32 is Hoxton's Revenge. This definitely would be more sided to stealth, I feel. Switch up some objectives and making this heist a bit more elaborate for stealthers could be really interesting. Just don't add circles. And at the end of this, who would the FBI be guarding in the panic room on this one? 31 is the Diamond Heist and the first on the list from Payday the Heist. I'd honestly take a full nostalgia pack of all Payday the Heist maps. Starbreeze, take my money. The Diamond Heist is a nice creepy stealth or a plain old loud and proud with no broken stuff. Not much variation on this one, so a pretty easy port heist mechanic wise. 30 is Black Cat. For me, is a sleeper of a heist, one that's really fun in both playstyles. Long hallways, big open casino area, outdoor boat section to finish. Objectives are fun, heist is a lot of fun overall and would feel good in Payday 3 visually and gameplay wise. 29 Beneath the Mountain suffers from the same aftershock van issue but it's a chopper at the end of the heist. But I can look past that. The physical progress you make through the heist is really fun. Outdoors to caves with vaults, back up top and prep and escape by a chopper. Cool stuff, let's have some more of that with Payday 3. Lab Rats, I'm gonna get some stick for this one. All right, I get it, it's not a fan favorite but it's controlled chaos. Yeah, we're looking at large batches of meth in oversized equipment, but the verticality of this map is enormous. And we can jump off the top and land safely on the ground if your ping is good, of course. Headless dozers are here. Big safe event thingy. No cover, crazy spawns. Music rocks hardcore. Admit it, you like lab rats. It's okay. Go on, say it. Join us. 27 No Mercy. In the opposite way I talk about lab rats, I'm usually on the other side when talking about No Mercy. This is not one of my favorite heists, and I'll tell you why. It's too predictable. We all know where the spawns are. You wait there and you spawn kill. Yeah, you get a ton of kills, and if you let it get out of hand, it can overrun you and get a bit crazy. But I'll be honest, I do get a bit bored on this one, especially if I have to drill three doors to find the right person on the table. And then after all that, do the blood samples. That negativity aside, I don't hate it and I think Payday 3 version could improve it. So it still sits in the want category for me. Number 26 on our run of classics is Heat Street. A mixed bag amongst those I hear from, but I'm actually a Heat Street enjoyer. The actual street where you feel the most heat, see what I did there? At the end up the big hill can be a pain, but it is rewarding if you nail it. It can also be a bit too easy if it's time right and there's no thingies going on. 25 is Greenbridge, a fun heist, both the chaos that can ensue in the first main objective area with the vans. Yeah, you can spawn kill pretty well here too, but this one easily overruns you and taking cover in the recessed area is pretty critical. The construction building and the rooftop area is extremely fun to play, albeit a little short, and then the small run to the drill and the bolt line to the finish. Good in Payday the Heist, great in Payday 2, could be amazing in Payday 3 question mark. 24 is undercover, would feel great in Payday 3. Multi-level high, simple objectives, Payday 3 could easily add circuits to this one. The addition of an objective on the roof or something to prolong the heist just a little bit more before exiting could be fun, but definitely not necessary. Counterfeit, the next Payday the Heist heist on the list and the end of this small run of them. I think we can agree that all the ports to Payday 2 were done well from Payday the Heist and improved on the original. My hope and also the reason I placed them so high on this list is that I would like the same improvement to happen again should they enter Payday 3. Not to say a straight port wouldn't be welcomed, but I feel they would look to make some positive adjustments. Counterfeit is a fun heist linking through two buildings to the basement. Printing money is a tad annoying, but not the worst. Frame in Frame, yet another launch map for Payday 2 sitting high on the list. Fun fact, Payday 2 launched with two three-day heists and three two-day heists. Payday 3 launched with 99 boxes. This heist gives us art gallery and a pretty worthless day two, sadly, and a really cool day three. If day two was reworked for Payday 3 and something worth playing, this heist would be top tier for sure. Day one and three are classics that would barely need touching. If anything, give us Bane back on day three and please God no circus. Here we are in the need category, technically A, you could say, if you're a stickler to the tier list rules. These must come to Payday 3, no ifs, ands, or buts. So let's take this away, Bank Heist, the OG of heists. I don't need all the variations, just one, and it needs to be a straight port. Now don't get me wrong, this needs to be on top of regular heist delivery, not an instead of. I don't want to wait two months for this bank heist, then get nothing for two more months. It just needs to be present. It's a staple that we all need. Even if you hate it, trust me, you need it to make the game feel like payday. Top 20, hitting you with the GOAT simulator. That's damn right, I put it here. This is another hear me out situation. 
Day one is a really cool heist. If that was a standalone, this would be higher. Yeah, I get it. Snipers, big crowds of cops on the street, a lot of goats to move, blah, blah, blah. I'll say this. Once you learn the flow of this one and when to move and do objectives and how to split up with your team to do them, it becomes a lot more fun. Vlad and goats are just funny. The setting is also very cool. I know most people are too busy getting their shit kicked in to admire the surroundings, but it's actually really nice out there. Day two ain't my favorite, but day one saves it for me. I don't mind so much the first part of day two, and the driving bits are nice linked to the final part. The final part is a bit shitty, really. A saw helps, and just hope you didn't use all your deployables before you got there. Say it with me, everyone. Bring back goat. Bring back goat. In the comments, bring back goat. No, just me then. Safe house raid. First off, let's have a safe house two raid. We got this in 2016, and in our ever fast journey backwards with payday three, we must have realized we didn't want one this time around. Well, we do. This heist was not one you played a lot. Well, not me anyways, but having it there was good. It actually plays well, and when you combine it with the actuality of having a safe house, with your trophies and a shooting range and heists to chat with and upgrades to their rooms, all right, I'm going off topic now, but goddamn, where did it all go wrong? 18 is Ukrainian prisoner. Now, this would be a cool heist to have in Payday 3. Out and out, loud guns blazing, just a lot of fun. Stealth ain't bad, just nothing to write home about. But loud is where it's at. Could have a 99 boxers feel given its location, just stay away from the circle. Mountain Master. I feel like this heist is underrated, if not just for the ability to steal your teammates' zip line up the elevator. Granted, the boss on this one is ridiculous, but that aside, this heist is fun. Again, loud is better, but something just clicks with this one and does not feel bugged or janky at all, other than the rooftop asshole, of course. Boiling point, the difficulty needs ramping up on this one a little, but the objective of holding out in the bottom area is a lot of fun. More stuff to go against would be good, turrets are a good addition down there when they spawn, and Payday 2's 360 no-scope snipers on the way out make anarchist players do poo-poo in their pants. But the slow slog for the server carrier is always a heart-thumping thriller. 15, Slaughterhouse from Payday the Heist is a good one. The warehouse combat is nuts and it slightly eases up when you take the fight outside because there's some corners you can kind of stay in, despite the aerial sniper attacks that will have you shaking in your boots. Cool mission objectives and a great ending speed running for your victory through the containers. 14 is Yacht Heist. First off, make Loud viable. Everyone on their mother, including yours, because I asked her, she sat right next to me, would love to play this one loud. Stealth is done well on this one and would easily translate to Payday 3. If it comes to Payday 3, don't change the music. Doesn't even need updating, straight port. I can see this one fitting right in. 13 is Car Shop, short and sweet, toy autos for all my Falco Genie needs. Loud variant, please. You see the theme here? Maybe the cops can chase us in the cars, and if it's loud, Clover's hair can be our secret weapon. This heist is very simple, challenges some and feels good to play. Did I mention make it loud also? Okay, good. I think that's clear now, right? 12 is Big Oil. I'm not sure why this one gets a lot of hate. I like it. Day 1 Loud is not really good, is it? But want to test your stealth skills? Do an all-house clear in stealth. Day 2, I like a lot. It would be good if in Payday 3 you could just take more engines to get more money or XP. If you still have trouble finding the correct engine in the downstairs lab, you must check out my 60-second YouTube short. It's very simple once you know how to do it. 11 is Panic Room and the penultimate Payday the Heist heist on the list. Meaning it's not my favorite one from that game, but it's damn close. You have to love the crazy roof combat, multi-floor craziness, and the airlift of the Panic Room. A great old heist that would be loved by the masses if it made it to Payday 3. Number 10, we are borderline S tier on this one, and it's Firestarter. A three-day banger that was released with Payday 2. Day one with the hangers can be a smash and grab or a peak stealth challenge. Day two takes you to the FBI and it's a fun jaunt both loud and stealth. Day three is visiting our friends at the Harvest and Trusty Bank for some money burning action. All three days can be stealth, all three days can be loud, pick your poison. This would be amazing to have in Payday 3. Now we hit the tippity top, the must haves, the gimme nows, the creme de la creme, the... All right, we get it. Number nine, the diamond. First off, we need the dentist to say the words. Come on, dude, say it. Second, let's get this one. The heist is already beautiful. Gameplay is fun, stealth is a blast, loud is awesome. Not really much more to say on this one, just don't change it if you do bring it back. Number eight is Big Bank. Now, put your hands up who thought this was gonna be number one. I considered it, but there's a couple of things that held me back. What makes the Big Bank great in Payday 2 are the different ways you can play it. And by that, I mean a lot based on pre-planning. Yeah, you could argue that 
they don't make that much difference. But having the option to change your exit does, even though the execution of it doesn't really change much, really just the direction in which you move the bags. It may well be that I missed the very simple mechanic in a payday game and its absence is felt. A nice looking bank without pre-planning ability turns out to be Golden Shark. But Golden Shark has certain... I'd love to see this heist in Payday 3, it just can't be bought over in the current landscape of Payday 3 mechanics. Scarface Mansion, this is another one that probably can't even be in the conversation due to licenses, but I'm not sure. It's a really good heist and will be so, so good in Payday 3. Great high stealth and loud, music is out of this world. Not a note of that would need changing, just make sure the lyrics are always on and let it play. Six is Hotline Miami. Both days on this heist are a blast. Day one in the motel area can often feel chaotic, especially when the objectives are kicking in, but it all feels really good and coordinated. Day two is very close quarters, but in a really good way. If those things weren't messed up in the transfer to payday three, then this would definitely be a very top tier want. Number five is the First World Bank, the final payday the heist one on the list. And oh my God, this will be a banger. It has to have overdrill in it but overdrill needs changing, or the heist needs changing to improve on it. Don't get me wrong, I've had my fun on overdrill, but after a few goes, the spawns are very broke. Cops don't spawn in the back area and just funnel towards the door up front. I love the signature stand in place to activate. I love the drill timer and the puzzle. Maybe put in a 30 minute option and an original two hour option, but don't make me move 70 bags. I guess it's 35 trips with transport, and if everyone has that skill, it now would be a lot less. But that's all that needs changing. Amazing classic, we need this one. Number four is Hoxton Breakout. I feel an opportunity was missed to somehow integrate this heist with Houston Breakout. I'm not saying a direct port or Houston's Breakout would just be this with different wording. Some kind of flashback heist in memory of would have been amazing. This heist had it all. A well randomized day one with enough small route changes and objective changes that made it feel like you never played the same version twice. Finding the spinning bulldozer in the correct room in the parking garage was epic. Day two with the iconic Hoxton voice interactions and again, random objectives. This heist is peak payday two and has everything that payday three is missing. Three, the golden green casino would just be great in payday three. I never fully enjoyed loud on this one, but it wasn't terrible, it just felt slightly clunky to me. This heist would look great in Payday 3. The stealth would need to be tightened up to increase difficulty, but this would be a real classic to have back. Number two is Birth of Sky. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm probably the only one on the planet that put this heist this high on a list like this. But I've got to say, I really, really love this heist. Start on a plane, three big money pallets, one that's broken and needs reassembling, and the sewer carnage that ensues at the end just mesh seamlessly together. Yep, Locke kind of brings this one too with his funny voice lines. A stealth aspect on the plane could also be fun to add, as well as some stealth on the ground, but maybe not 100% stealth. Maybe just prepping the pallets for lifting and then boom, loud. This heist would rock in Payday 3. Number one is Shadow Raid. Come on, there's nothing else that could be the top of this list. For all you non-stealthers out there, this heist does need to have a loud option too. Like I said before, Meltdown is not Shadow Raid loud. It just isn't. Stealthing out with Odu Nabu Naga, the music that kicks in, the memories of the past decade, the voice lines, it's all just so, so good. Of all heists in Payday 2, this is the one that kicks ass with heist feeling. There's nothing else like it. If it was to be replicated in Payday 3, it would be a complete masterpiece. So there we go. It's a long list. It took a while, but I think it had to be said. Now, go down to the comments. Do you agree? Do you not agree? I'll see you in the next one.